take your word for it. Uh, my name is Nick Isham. Uh, my mom actually works for Portland Public Schools for 35 years or so, so maybe you guys have heard of her. But uh, we're going to go through this array, which we refer to as the bike canopy. Uh, after this, we'll go down into the basement where we will take a look at the inverter for this array. And we'll also go to the main electrical room where you will see the breakers for our various systems. Um, after we go down to the basement, we'll go up to this part of the building, which we refer to as the West Expansion. Up there, we have an inverter bank, which we will go through the ins and outs, how to turn it on, how to turn it off, uh, and then general maintenance of these systems. Uh, this one uh, is a bifacial 360-watt panels system. There's 93 of them. Um, they're by Lumus, and they're bifacial because they don't have a back sheet underneath them. Uh, you can see right through them. Uh, this actually allows them to produce a little bit more electricity uh, because photons can encompass the cell just a little bit more. Uh, in this room, which I need to pack you all in so we can kind of go through this switch over here. This is our rapid shutdown system for uh, this bike canopy. There is a red knob right here on the right side. Um, it has to be, you know, within a couple feet of the array. So, uh, if you see the red knob, that will shut down the system on the array level. Uh, this disconnect is, uh, is dependent on AC. So, uh, do we all know the difference between AC and DC electricity? I know you do. Uh, but the difference, uh, solar panels produce DC electricity, that is a direct current. Uh, our building runs off of AC, an alternating current. Um, so if this is not receiving an alternating current, it is not pushing a direct current to the electrical panel in the electrical room. Um, that way it just stops on the array level uh, right here. So there's, if anyone's working on the line or anything like that, uh, it will stop all DC at this point. Uh, any questions about this room? They're not optimized? The, so this is not an optimized. There's no module level electronics on this array. Uh, we will go through that on the other roof. Okay. Uh, it's a great question. Uh, that is why uh, this box is needed because they are not uh, optimized, which is not required unless it's on a rooftop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how strong are these panels? Are they going to take abuse if we hit the top of them? Or? <laughs> so they're pretty strong. Our guys were standing on them. They can hold about 250 pounds. Sorry, my phone's going off. I wouldn't either. And uh, yeah, so we don't stand on the middle of them. You know, we're kind of standing on the rails. Um, yeah, but we had to go up there. And then as far as cleaning the system, there is a lot of traffic. Um, over the last few weeks, so it has been impossible to keep clean. Uh, when construction's concluded, you know, definitely uh, we need to get up there and blast it with a hose. Um, we'll discuss cleaning all the various systems. We typically just use water. Uh, we don't use anything abrasive, but if you're washing your car, uh, something soft uh, and a squeegee works just fine. Sometimes we'll mix a little bit of Windex with our water, uh, about one to five uh, ratio How Windex water to water. Brush. Works great, yeah. Sprayed water at the same yep, time? Absolutely, yeah. Um, I have a question about when it rains, because these are pretty flat, Yeah. so if water pools up, is that... So they're the actually angled and uh, waterproofed, so there is uh, a tape that uh, goes across where the panels meet, uh, creating a watertight barrier, and there's actually a gutter on this uh, lower end uh, so to collect all the water. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. Are you worried about snow pack or ice pack on these No. Definitely not. Uh, snow, you know, it, everything's taken into consideration through engineering. So, snow loads, it's all regional. Wind loads also. All right, should we go downstairs? Yeah, let's do it. Frame of the panel, you want to make sure it's where the rail is, not like in the middle of it or on the edges, because that can bend and flex and break them. So, you yeah. literally have to like walk on the mids. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and this is actually. Um, the mids are a little bit different. You're probably used to mids, which are like a grounding mechanism. We'll go through all that upstairs. Oh yeah, but this is the awesome. disconnect for every system on the school and the bike canopy. Uh, this is the utility rapid shutdown. So in case of emergency, a firefighter or the utility will flip this, and that will shut down all the systems. It will shut down this system from that rapid shutdown box because that is AC dependent. It will shut down all the system, all the uh, rays on the gym and the west expansion on the module level because they have module level electronics so and we'll go through that in detail but this is the main disconnect uh, right here is your placard kind of with everything that we're gonna we're gonna go up here to take a look at the west expansion uh, the various arrays and their various uh, 
forms of shutdown is all mapped out right there. Do we have a special padlock to put on these for... The utility, so the utility has not uh, swapped out the meter for a bi-directional net meter yet. Uh, when they do do that, uh, we will be able to leave the systems on indefinitely and uh, they will put a little thing right uh, here to make sure no one goes in. So, but he means turn it off. So we have kids running into high school. <laughs> yeah. High school. Yeah. Um, you can't lock it in the on position. No, you, you cannot lock it in the on position. Yeah. Um, so if I, they flip it off, I have to call somebody to come out and flip it back on and get mad. Nope. If it, they flip it off, you can flip it right back on and everything will stay online. Mm -hmm. It will take uh, approximately 300 seconds for everything to get back online and that's just for safety if anyone's working on the line. And we'll go through the 300 second countdown together. We'll get the countdown together. Are these going to be just exposed or is there some kind of cage? cage or fence? Uh, this is exposed. It has to be accessible. Mm -hmm. Well, you can still put a fence and then yeah. they, they, they can have a key to it. Yeah. You talk to the utility and, and you have their lock because that's how other schools are. Yeah, we have a St. Helens Middle School. They're actually allowing us to put it inside uh, because it's a middle school and yeah. it's a big red, you know, yeah. don't touch me. So someone's going to touch it. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably going to happen here, too. Yeah. Well, we'll see. So, should we dive down? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Any more questions about the disconnect out here? No, good. <laughs> yeah, great. All right. So, this is our main breaker for all the PV systems. They all come through here. Behind this breaker, there are current transformers or CTs that are monitoring the full production of all the systems. Over here is our combiner panel, which has a breaker dedicated for the various systems. This one being for the gym, this one being for the west expansion. This one uh, refers to uh, the CTs that are located on behind that main breaker. This is the data power station. These also energy boxes. We'll discuss these uh, while we're on the roof, but there is three of these in total, each of them kind of serving a separate purpose. This one controls, uh, so this connects to the internet and it connects, uh, it allows the CTs to communicate with the internet in addition to the production of the bike canopy. So it's monitoring the production of the total all systems and the bike canopy. Um, so do, do, do. this is for the CTs, this is for this box to operate, and uh, inverter 11 is for the bike canopy. We'll go check that out uh, in the room next door. And this last one is for, what is it for? For the data box. Data box, what am I missing? Oh, this is for uh, the rapid shutdown system outside on the bike canopy. And I know that because I ripped off the placard that they misspelled and we'll have a new one out there <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah, so that is for the rapid shutdown. So because it's AC dependent, if you flip that, it would shut down on that uh, level right there in that cage that we were in. And so there wouldn't be anything live in the conduit. Um, these are in the on position, so I'm just going to leave them like that. looks like that's in the on position also. So next step is to go up on the roof and start turning some switches. Can I ask a question? Yeah, absolutely. So that's the main feed into the main switch here from that, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so it's like reverse of the regular electrical system? Uh, combiner. Yes. Yeah, yeah there's... Thing together and then it feeds that. Yeah, there's, and there's also a combiner panel. This, these two breakers actually go to their own combiner panels, which will uh, open one up when we're upstairs. So uh, each rooftop has, or each, uh, the gym and the west expansion each have their own combiner panel on the roof. And then do you have, um, is there warranty dates on all their arrays? Are they all the same or are they different? So the warranties are product dependent. So there's a warranty for the panels, there's a warranty for the racking, there's a warranty for the inverters, and then uh, I believe there's an individual warranty, uh, workmanship warranty from us. What, how long is that one? I don't know off the top of my head. I did okay. not sell the system, yeah. but yeah. Um, it's typically, I got like your contract, it's typically one year though. One year, okay, yeah. All the other ones are regulated by Oregon State, I think. Mm. Yeah, ETO. Yeah. 
we're you know we're here for you. We've been around 30 years, so yeah, <laughs> older also, than older than me. <laughs> the rapid shutdown by the bicycle canopy is that just for the bicycle canopy, or is that yes. for everything on this end? No. Uh, were you saying the big uh, 800 amp one? Just the that is just for the bike canopy. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the big handle that shuts does that shut trip in? everything. So yeah. that oh, that is in between this panel and that breaker. So if we have a fire in the building and I need to shut the thing down. Would I have to come shut this down and shut off some rocks? You could shut off the main disconnect outside, the 800 amp disconnect. The 800 amp will kill it all. Kill everything. Because even though this is feeding power back to the building, it'll still shut it Everything is AC dependent, and the inverters uh, and that disconnect that we saw uh, on the bike canopy will shut everything off on the array level when you flip that disconnect. Are we holding these? Are we, are we holding these, or is like the, the other ones that are? So is that like the other it's schools not, that are no. half PG or? No, we, all, we own all those now too. Oh, the other ones, that's right, yeah. All the ones that we go on the bond school, we There's some schools that PG owns the equipment and we get yeah. some money. Yes. But this is not the case. It's not the case. Okay. Also, just so you are clear with the rapid shutdown, it w the DC part of that system is still hot, especially if there's if there's not so don't think that when you turn that off that you can just go and plug a panel because and it won't be live, it will still be live. So, just so you know. Yeah. It takes no, uh, no, the panel the, the panels will still be hot and the yeah. wires come out of the panel is always hot if the sun is out. Yeah. If the sun is out, they're producing power, the, you can't turn those off. So how, how do you turn it? Because those no. are still generating, still, if it's sun outside, those are still generating power. Yes. So is there a disconnect up right you after? You can't the turn them off on the panel. You can't turn off an individual panel, but the panels do run through an optimizer. It's a solar edge product, module level electronic, which does have a safety voltage of one. So you're. So those are optimized? I'm talking yeah. about the parking lot. The parking lot is not optimized. That's what I'm yeah. About. So upstairs exactly. is different. Downstairs. So if you, if in order to change a panel, you have to do here early. <laughs> yeah. Do it in the winter. <laughs> yeah, do, well, that doesn't really. I think you get more production in the winter depending on. Well, the yeah, yeah, in the morning, yeah. yeah, it gets a little too yeah, hot so right now. Yeah. <laughs> if the morning in the winter is a clear day, it's actually worse. How much do you think we can ride for? That's true. Yeah. 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 Are you saying total <laughs> consumption of the building? How much power are we creating with this thing? Oh, yeah. uh, it is a 354 kilowatt system, I believe. Yeah, it's pretty big. It is the biggest system on a high school. When it was designed, I believe it was the West Coast, and then, but when it actually got installed and finished and it, we're still about to be power off, powered on, it's just gonna be the biggest in Oregon. So are, are the panels storing energy or just no. pumping? No, nope. there is no energy storage. Uh, you will have a bi-directional net meter, so uh, everything that you are generating is going through that breaker and is powering that bus bar, so you're powering this building with solar while you're producing energy. While you're not producing energy, you're just gonna be taking power from the grid. Uh, whatever excess energy, perhaps you're producing more than you're using in this it building, it goes through the bi-directional net meter and you guys will be credited for your excess energy and you can use those credits on the school's electricity bus. They know everything. They know everything, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the CT back behind there, is that for monitoring for the company to make sure everything's working or is that for that's the net meter? So that's for everyone, I would yeah. say, because, uh, and I can show you on my app, but it is linked to an also energy product called PowerTrack. And from there, you'll be able to view a production of the total system, the individual systems, uh, along with the weather equipment that is on the roof. We have uh, various weather instruments that we'll go take a look at when we're up there. So this is a monitor through Tygo. It's not Tygo. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. what happens if you lose power? In the building, and that solar panel is still running, right? Are we no. still running power? So because they're AC dependent, if we lose power in the building, they will shut off like they're supposed to do. And we'll kind of demonstrate a power outage when we're on the roof, and you'll see what the inverters go through, and then uh, we'll turn them back on, and yeah. Yeah, no, it's not, yeah. You have to have, like, battery, you would have, to have battery backup. But our generator is running. Yeah, the generator is going to be, you know, if the power's out and the sun's not up, the generator the generator's running, yeah. yeah. Well, no, even if you lose power to the school, the generator's going to get gone. It's not going to run on the school. Oh, yeah, exactly, yeah. So it's not connected to the solar stuff at all? No. Yeah.
Did you say it was the largest on any school in Oregon? I believe so. High school. I'm not, I yeah. assume, yeah, for now, right? It's, <laughs> until next year. Yeah. <laughs> and Is the Madison going to be bigger? I can see that. <laughs> At the time that we were built, we could say. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard. I heard when the plans, when it was permitted, it was like the largest high school in the West Coast or something, largest solar project in the West Coast. Which I mean, just like a, we'll see. It's crazy. <laughs> Is it bigger than Beaverton? The new one that they built on Roy Roger and Short Bay. That seems huge compared to this one. Is that on a school? Yeah. Trying to think. What school is that? I think it's called Mountain View. Mountain Mountainside High School. We did that. Yeah, it's larger than that. It's <laughs> <laughs> larger than that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, what do you mean? You mean just the solar panels? Yeah. No, oh, okay. I got Because be, that building seems big. That building is fancy. Yeah, that yeah. building's cool. Yeah. <laughs> this building's cool. I mean, yeah. yeah. Let's uh, go upstairs. Um, Those. Yeah. So these are just uh, junction boxes for these three systems on the doghouse. There's a junction box on these other subarrays also. You can see uh, this one's on the far side and then um, this one actually combines, I believe, in the gutter itself. Oh, okay. that expansion. Yeah. So uh, these are primarily just for the longevity of this system uh, because we don't have long wire poles connecting inverter banks to all these arrays. Uh, we can, you know, splice our connections here and just makes it manageable uh, because we can, you know, break up our system into segments and, you know, find problems if problems were to arise. So are there like terminal blocks in there that... Um, yes, like yes, okay. it should, terminal. yeah. Mm -hmm. And not fused. We don't no fuse, yeah. yep, no fuse. Oh, that is one thing I did not, uh, I failed to mention at the bike canopy, that disconnect does have fuses located in it. Okay, what so size are those? Uh, off the top of my head, I do not know, yeah. I wasn't sure if they were like midget fuses or like... They're very like small, like yeah, they're very small, yeah. Yeah, so that is kind of, uh, and you would know if a fuse was out, you would be able to view that on the online monitoring platform, because all production would cease. Great. So that would be pretty much the first place that we would check. it's on the rapid shutdown. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Questions? <laughs> how are we going to clean these? We're not going to be able, We shouldn't have to clean them that much. Yeah, I would say one cleaning, you know, prior to the kids coming to school, uh, and then, you know, check in a year. These bigger arrays do tend to collect a little bit more of dust and stuff. Uh, you can just look at, you know, the floor collecting dirt over time. Uh, yeah, I mean, we suggest every two years, you know, washing them down. But What's the safest way to access these? There's no room on the other side of That's what I'm saying. That's so, the there is room on the other side. We can walk around if yeah, you wanted to go check it out. But we have two full sets, right? This one and that. Uh, the there. Oh, the gym. The gym is a little bit different, but from this corner, you can actually see the inverter bank, which is not located on the actual gym, but on a roof just below it. Uh, and it's identical with this. Uh, it does not have any of the weather instruments, so it does have an also energy box on the gym, uh, but that only monitors the production of the inverters on the gym. So there's no weather instruments on the gym. Anything else? <laughs> so yeah, it's just ma make it shorter segments to manage our wire. We would call this, you know, a point of failure uh, because if something were wrong with the system, this would be one of the places that we would want to check. And this is years down the road when, you know, perhaps water's gotten in here. Uh, you know, it's been under the elements for years. That we, this would be one of the first places we would check. Are these thousand volt inverters? I'm assuming. Um, they are not. They're not. They are. Six hundred. Uh, actually. Think, how big are your strings? Uh, now I'm trying to remember. I do have a plant set right in, front, in my pocket. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. I just want people to be aware that there could be up to like 800 volts on a string. You know. Well, actually, no. You got optimizers. No. Yeah, because the optimizers yeah. it operates at a safer voltage than like the bike canopy would. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw the connectors hanging. Uh, just to the side of that rapid shutdown system on the bike canopy, but those actually have to be uh, out and like exposed to the elements. Uh, they are watertight, but they have to be out because they do not operate at a safe voltage like this system does. So, what um, connectors are they? MC4 or Anthenol? They're, I believe, they're the MC cable. Uh, yeah, the MC4. MC4. Yeah. Okay. I believe um, these do you all. Any are. extra MC4 tools? They're really hard for me to find. Um, yeah, I I could <laughs> probably find you some. 
Yeah. You've got actually there's like a rounder connector, and then I see an MC4. Is the rounder one an amphenol, or they just are separate? So one of them, those two are on the optimizer. So actually, I'm not sure which ones are on if the we optimizer. Could, if we could figure out what tool that is to take them apart, so we that use I a have, needle nose. You just use a needle yeah. nose plier, mm -hmm. and you just pry it apart. Yeah. Okay, and that it, won't void a warranty. Or no, no, it has kind of a mechanism that you unlock. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Void warranties. Yeah. No voiding warranties. Okay. Definitely not. Um, yeah. Any other um, questions, guys? So if you're at the inverter, actually, and you're testing DC voltage while it's on, it can have up to, it will be about 1,000 volts Yeah. at the inverter with the, op what is the max uh, voltage on the optimizers? Do you know? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head, no. So the more panels you add together, the more voltage you'll have? Yes. So then, then there's so many here that... If they produce 40 volts each, there will be thousands and thousands. You guys have yes. some parallel systems, or, or it's so it's combined. It's, they're in grouped in a, in a in a way that they have they generate only that much. So each string will not be over a thousand volts. Okay. If those inverters right. are thousand volt inverters, okay. yeah. gotcha. one so string is okay. is a little less than a thousand volts probably. And then because I don't think because you have to adjust for yes. peak sun and cold, so. Um, the c but the inverter combines them. So you have and with all of its electronics. Part of the goes to the converter. The There's probably inverter. how many strings per inverter? I mean, it depends on the size of the. Yeah, yeah, the it's yeah there and there's so one inverter that's smaller. Smaller. Yeah, it's a, it's so a smaller like inverter altogether. Forty so. kilowatt inverters. I believe there's. I think there's like six strings per inverter or something six like that. Strings. Yeah, okay. and I can we could actually pull that out. Well, that'll all be on the stuff that, that you give us. Yes, it okay. will. So you need to make sure you have a thousand volt meter, a thousand volt DC meter. Yeah, I definitely have that. So if you if you ever want to borrow it or whatever, yeah. No, you got to make sure most of them are 600 volt DC. The DC part is the little harder to find. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're getting better. Do you want to see what the is like on the other side? Yeah. Yeah, we can walk a lot. That's my red that's ladder. My, no, that's not my ladder. <laughs> I wish. Um, yeah, I mean, you can see it's a little bit more accessible on this side as far as washing it. You'll be amazed how easy dirt comes off with just water. Um, you know, just putting your thumb on a hose will take a lot off. And then, you know, we use like car brushing scrubs, uh, scrubbers, you know, on uh, extended pulls. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys don't have any other questions, we can conclude it and then uh, we'll all meet down at the bottom of that ladder and I'll lead you guys out. So wait, this is, is there another, there's got to be another set of arrays. How many, there's like another five inverters or no, they're all over there? Yeah, so uh, we can actually peek over here. So the gym is entirely covered in photovoltaics. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's actually a door behind this uh, big piece of equipment here. There's a door. Uh, it's not very accessible today. There's I don't know, like a 30-foot ladder to get up there uh, just to get to that door right now. Wow. And they're painting in that hallway, so I wasn't able to get there today. Um, yeah, but I'll probably check here in a little bit to see if we can commission that one over there. And then where's the access to that? It's somewhere in... Is that yeah, so within the door, you can't really see the door, but within the door, which is just behind here, oh, okay. there... Yeah, there's yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and then there's a uh, a ship ladder, yeah, with a hatch that takes you to uh, the gym. Yeah, and the gym doesn't have uh, you know any of the smart technology uh, from the also energy like this one does. So that that also energy box just does uh, production of those uh, inverters over there. Okay, yeah, you had to do them separately then. Uh. Yeah, the oh, and then that runs all the way back to the electric room. Uh, yep. Where is, I'm kind of, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, it's just right over there. Yeah, and you, you can just, just go see, underground, or what'd you do? Well, we're we, you know, we were here <laughs> with the but guys the pouring the foundation. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We've been here for eight months now, yes. I think, uh, from the very beginning, because we just had to get conduits in the wall, and yeah, and then we had to wait for a roof to go up, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not too many trades are out here, you know, the entire duration yeah. of the install. Yeah. Kind of funny. That's cool. Uh, yeah, you can just see how dirty these 
bike canopy yeah, mods get. Yeah. And you can actually see the waterproofing tape that's kind of yeah. lined up. So can I pressure wash that then? Is it going to peel the tape off? I wouldn't, pr I never recommend pressure washing systems. I have like a, a tiny little pressure washer. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not I mean, like, I'm not blasting with 3000 And I trust your judgment. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I would definitely test it because it does have that waterproofing tape. Yeah. That tape, it's, uh, what is that it called? Actually like, might have to be cleaned more it, often. It's like M3. Water, I mean, they've just been driving a lot of vehicles. Yeah, this asphalt totally. went in just this week, oh, so okay. it was just all well, dust. So they and, don't have any yeah. baseball fields around here. That's nice. That's, yeah. Okay, that's it. Fabian is flat in baseball fields. Right? Yeah, Fabian. Yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think this is all going to be like vegetation and dirt in this area. Is but there a ladder on that thing at all? Access? Probably not. Huh? No. So we okay. access. Uh, well, extension ladder. Scissor lift for, you know, oh, the installation, wow. but. The bad thing about that is that you have to do it when the school is done. No. It's such hard. I you don't want to have kids running around. With water coming down on them? I guess not, huh? No, they might like it in the summer. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, for cleaning this system, I would just recommend going up on the high side and just blasting water down. Oh, you know? okay. Yeah, maybe I can use a lift for that yeah, then. Yeah, I wouldn't even... Uh, I'm not even a scrub you, brush or anything. Yeah, standing on it, standing insulated? on it is not recommended. Do you yeah. have insulated scrub brushes? Insulated? Like plastic? Or are they metal? Um, are you saying like the, like the pole? The pole? Yeah. I think they're aluminum. Mine are too. Yeah. Okay, I don't know. How they're a little bit I'm like... You you had... yeah, if there's like a leak panel leakage, you know, there's like if there's like micro fracturing and then you put uh, water on it and then you're scrubbing it with the metal. Still, uh, Working, you don't turn them off. Yeah, you, you can't turn them off. There's no, there's no turning them off. Yeah, panels if they're under sun, yeah. they're they're, but they're you hot. Turn the system off. Yeah, so that there's less amperage, but mm -hmm. still. Yeah, I mean, they're they're I've meant heard. to withstand the elements. You know, the rain is going to be pounding these systems, yeah. so there's there's really uh, it, they're meant to operate under those conditions. Yeah. So they're completely watertight in every way. Yeah, hopefully this area is going to get like turned into grass. Are the other inverters on the roof? No. There is inverters on the roof. There is 10 inverters on the roof in total. This is inverter number 11. There we go. Um, so this is your Yaskawa inverter for the bike canopy. So this goes to that disconnect uh, prior to going to the individual panels. Uh, this has two main disconnects. It has a DC disconnect on this side and it has an AC disconnect located on this side. When we're turning on the systems, we typically want to start on the service end or the, uh, the source side. So we've already flipped the breakers. Uh, the main breaker on the MVP was already on. Uh, the breakers in the combiner panel were already on. So now we're going to flow onto this AC disconnect and turn this guy. <coughs> and then this one actually, this inverter does not turn on with just AC. It is DC to get uh, the menu on. So we're going to flip this DC switch now. And this will go through its boot up procedures. When it hasn't been connected to AC, it will go through its safety 300 second countdown. So it's going to be a while before we see anything. I did flip that on, right? Yeah. It's yeah. Flashing out. Okay, great. So we can wait here for 300 seconds or... While we're waiting, I'm yeah. noticing that there's red labels on the one I'm perceiving is the DC coming in from the array. Correct. Is that that way in the entire school? Yes. Is that code? Yes. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any maintenance or anything? Uh, no, maintenance is pretty low-key with this. Uh, you know, it runs updates and firmware. When we first got it online, it will be all automated going forward, so you guys won't need so to... So it's hooked up to the internet? Correct. Because I have to update all the other ones at all the other stores. Oh, jeez, yeah. really? Yeah. yeah, fun. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah so uh, this is connected to the internet. The main way to turn this off would be to start with the DC disconnect and then go to the AC disconnect. So it would be the opposite of what we just did. And that will be for everything. So we'll kind of go uh, downstream uh, to the photovoltaics and then we'll come back upstream. So yeah, I think that's the other way around. Upstream and then downstream. So stand by. Any other questions? Are we? Is this the, well, obviously this is one of the many inverters. Um, the inverters located the other end of the school for the rooftop stuff? They're on the roof. They're on the roof, yeah. So we'll go up there and there's an inverter bank uh, on the west expansion with five inverters and then there's an inverter bank on the gym with 
five and brothers. So besides the gym and the roof out there, this is the only other location? Correct. Okay. Three locations at home. Are the combiners on the roof too? The AC combiners? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, there. Yes. The combiner panels. There's a combiner panel per uh, each roof dump. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Is there a password protection on any of these? There is not. No. Do you have the manuals or anything left over? Yep, there's a manual right here, and we're gonna probably leave it there or give it to you. Yeah, the website's also very helpful. So yeah, yeah, I usually call them too. Yeah, exactly. They're yeah. they're used to it. Yeah. And we should have all that when the, you guys come over. Yeah, that's another oh, that's another thing is oh, okay. how many copies of owners' manuals would you guys like? <laughs> all of them. All of them. One of each product and one. Like yeah, we were gonna have like a, a yeah one owner's manual with all the various products, all you and know, encompassing like all the systems. A couple of sets of those. Okay. Like one for you, and then we'll keep one in the electrical. I keep all of the stuff yeah. in my office too. I have a book on everything in the building except my office too. Okay. Plus we'll have it stored digitally as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's all I need. Oh great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have an RFI that we have to upload keep, every keep one of the units. Yeah. I'm worried it'll get lost. You can put it there for now. Yeah. <laughs> if it has like a little All right. spot or something. So we are now producing. So this display uh, is pretty straightforward. It rotates between two different inputs. Uh, there is, I believe, five strings in total on the bike canopy. Uh, so the string or the inputs, there's uh, one input and two inputs. Uh, one of them has two strings, one of them has three strings. Uh, so you're going to see that their power output is not identical. Uh, but you do on the right side here have your cumulative power, and with the online monitoring, you'll be able to guarantee that you know you're getting bang for your buck. Is it is it two MPPTs then? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. And then do you have anything that has the stringing on it, like how the? Yeah, we like a string map or yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that we can. Yeah, we have that in our plant set, so we okay. can definitely uh, redline that out for you. Yeah, if you put it in the digital stuff, any of the stringing stuff will be super helpful for cool. any sort of future sort of maintenance. Nice. Issues. Yeah. Yeah. We still, uh, the Solar Edge monitoring platform still has to get online. Okay. So once that's online, that's where all the strings are done. And, okay. and you guys will have logins for that. That's another thing is there's going to be, uh, I need to kind of collect email addresses for whoever wants to log into the various monitoring platforms, yeah. uh, whether it's a generic one. Um, and we'll have our login also so we can monitor on our, our end. But uh, yeah, we can provide, you know, I think infinite logins. So it doesn't so. say okay. Lauren and Aaron for sure. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, we'll just we'll exchange business cards after this and uh, okay. Well, you can bug you can bug me then. What is the life expectancy on, on the panels? Um, so on the pan the panels are going to be produced. The, 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 the solar panels. Twenty. So the solar panels have uh, a warranty of like yeah twenty five years I believe. That's pretty cool. Um, but they're going to be producing for a hundred plus years. They technology just does not stop. Um, and the maintenance is primarily done on the inverter end. These are the things that only have about 15 to 20 year uh, life expectancies. Do we have uh, extended warranties on any of these? Is that a thing? I cannot quote any of your warranty information, unfortunately. Yeah, I wish I knew. <laughs> yeah. I can get that in documentation for you. So I'm going to turn this off now. No need to do this. So I'm going to start with the DC disconnect. And then Why are you turning it up? It doesn't need to produce right now? Or what uh, because you don't have a bi-directional net meter, whatever energy we are producing is actually being clocked as consumption, not production. So uh, yeah, we're, char we're costing you electricity at this point. <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to put your car holders. I mean, the building's solar powered, but yeah. <laughs> but that, uh, that's not how it works. So even if you're selling it back, you're still getting charged. So are you guys scheduling the bi-directional meter install? Yeah, it, it's already been sent out to Pacific Power. Whoever uh, filled out the net metering application, I can take a look at that on my iPad here. But uh, whoever filled that out with their email and their, uh, it's whoever, it's probably from Anderson or the school district. Yeah, it probably has my email right Oh, really? It's been a while since I've Okay, yeah, we, we'll, we can check that. And then, because uh, you'll get an email which will, it's kind of, uh, I'm typically not CC'd on it. 
So uh, you'll receive an email that will prompt you to call in and schedule a meter exchange. Yeah. Uh, it's usually you know about two to a week out, two days to a week out before they can come out here. And then once they do that, we can just leave everything on indefinitely. So we'll come out cool. here for one last you know interpretation. Uh, all right, this is off, and so let's move. go on the roof. So we'll all come over here. Oh, I got a bunch of them. Yeah. Do you build a cover for these? We do not. So. Solar Edge is now the only inverter that you can put in sunlight. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Making it easier for everybody. Nice. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Jeez. I think someone just didn't tighten it up. Yeah, they, I think they did cross-thread it. Yeah, we'll get a new one in here. Sabotage. I'd probably run a threaded, threaded chaser in there. Yeah. So this is our uh, rooftop combiner panel. Uh, there's a breaker dedicated for each of these inverters. We're going to go ahead and turn these on. And we'll go through uh, this uh, procedure. But first, uh, this is another also energy box. This one has a couple different uh, devices connected to it. It has the wind speed and direction. It has uh, ambient temperature. It has uh, a light meter. It has two module temperatures um, on a sensor on this array over here and then another array over there. Uh, it is also monitoring the production of these inverters. And then we'll just close this. Uh, this is the Solar Edge inverter. Uh, all these are identical, except one of them is actually a smaller size. Uh, but as far as the startup and shutdown procedures, it's identical in every way. Each of these has a main DC disconnect on the front of it. This is going to be your primarily, primary on and off button for these inverters. There is also a red toggle right here, which allows you to uh, keep producing power, uh, but then disable the individual module level electronics so you then stop power on the module level and navigate the menus still. We primarily leave this in the on position always, this little red guy, and then we use this to turn on and off the inverters. So we're going to go ahead and turn them all on. Oh, that should be good. So, because it hasn't been connected to the AC power, uh, it, it will go through the 300 second countdown. Each of these has a display and a small green button right here. This will allow you to activate the display and then navigate the various screens. Um, and we can go through the screens in detail here in a little bit. Uh, right now, the first thing it's going to do when it uh, turns itself on is going to start finding the optimizers. That's the module level electronics. There is one optimizer for every two panels. Uh, so there is hundreds. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, it's going to go through the 300 second countdown. Let's see. There it is. Now's a good time for questions since we have to wait another 300 seconds. <laughs> Uh, we have here has second shutdown yeah, so, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, so there is uh, everything that's located just over here, so your wind speed and direction. And then there is uh, two sensors right here, which is your ambient temperature, and I believe it's called the paranometer, which measures light. And then you said there was some other sensor located in the array. And then there is a module temperature sensor. Uh, it's you know, you don't hear about mod temp very often, but actually the hotter it gets, the less efficient a solar panel operates. Just more metrics for us to view, really. <laughs> hey, do you want to take us over here while we're waiting and maybe talk about the procedures of maintenance? Yeah, yeah.
So you can see right here, this says 50 out of 51. All of them have a different uh, number of optimizers that they are connected to. Um, it is trying to find the optimizers right now. It can take anywhere from five to 30 minutes when it's a system this size. Um, that one's one shy, this one's one shy, this one's four shy. So they're still trying to find the optimizers at this point. Uh, if it wasn't able to find an optimizer, you would know via the online monitoring, uh, you would know where that optimizer is and you'd be able to determine uh, if that optimizer is dead, perhaps underproducing, um, or you know, defective in some way. Uh, the warning lights, there's three lights here uh, on each inverter. One says power production, that is a green light. If that is green, it means you're producing electricity, and that is good. The module communication, that is a yellow light. It will be on when you're in the menus navigating, uh, which you guys typically will not need to do ever. Uh, but it is typically just flashes every couple seconds or so. Uh, just indicating that it is communicating with the internet. And then this bottom light says fault. It is a red error light. If there's any error of any sort, or if you're in the menu, that light will be on. If that light is on, we typically just tell you to go through a system uh, shutdown and startup, and that way on our end, it's kind of easier to diagnose what the problem is when you've uh, turned off the system and turned it back on. Uh, if this light's on, uh, for any reason, give us a call. Uh, but if that light turns on, I'll actually receive an email uh, that will let me know what's wrong, what inverter pinged, uh, and what's wrong with it. Um, anywhere, anything from a fault um, to, you know, I'm not sure, a fault or, or, or is primarily uh, the reason for the red light. Is there any way we can have access to that too? Yeah, you'll have access to the online monitoring. Especially after the one year. Yep, and uh, when you guys, when you provide me your email, you'll also receive email notifications. Cool. I'll just give you full access. So, awesome. Yeah. Great. Uh, wondering what else. Well, I guess we can demonstrate uh, what would happen in the case of a power outage. Uh, so we'll just start with this one. So this one has found all the optimizers. And we'll just click this button a couple times so I can explain what is in the various menus. Uh, the first menu uh, just shows you the voltage AC, so that is coming from the combiner panel. It shows you the voltage DC, so what is it, what is it is receiving from the array that it is connected to. And then you see the power AC, so that is the power that it is pushing back into the grid. Um, and then it has the optimizer count on that first menu. If you click the green button once, it takes you to uh, the individual, no, that's the total. Here we go. All right, this takes you to the day, the month, the year, and the total energy production for this inverter. Uh, this is all going to be on the online monitoring platform. It's a lot easier to just pull up your iPad or laptop than it is to come up here and read these numbers. Um, but right now you can see that total, this inverter has produced 77 kilowatt hours at this point. Uh, if you click it a couple more times, you'll see server RS-485, that's basically a, a Cat5 uh, that is for longer distances, that is what is enabling internet connection for this. Uh, you can see that its status is okay. Monitoring, uh, troubleshooting is about 50% of the troubleshooting we do, uh, whether you know, you change internet provider or something got unplugged. Um, monitoring is something that, you know, I find myself more often than, you know, an actual technical issue, something that involves electrician uh, is, you know, something that's typically needed. These guys are connected to the internet, so they will be on automa automatic updates, um, which will pretty much get rid of any monitoring issues that you guys have. The automatic update is <laughs> totally necessary at this point. I mean, I can't believe you have to go around to every school and Some yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing things anymore, <laughs> like that anymore. Yeah. Uh, all right, so we'll simulate a power outage. So we'll just turn off the AC power going into inverter one, and doing that, we'll trigger this red fault light. So it knows it's no longer receiving AC power. It knows that it should not be pushing DC or it should not be converting DC to AC at this point. 
because it's not receiving AC, it's going to turn off the DC on the module level on, at the optimizer, the module level electronic. So just to be clear, it'll still be hot from the panel to the module the yes. optimizer, but then the optimizer will only have one volt. Yeah, correct. That's just for us. Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. Um, so this is totally off, and then if the power were to come back on, so this is still in the on position, so it still uh, wants to produce, but because it wasn't receiving AC, it knows that it needed to rapid shut down. It needed to turn itself off. So the power is restored. This will then know it's receiving power. It's got its red fault light, which just went away, and then it will go through its 300 second countdown uh, prior to, uh, it's also gonna refine the optimizers. So it's gonna refine the optimizers and go through the 300 second countdown prior to ter uh, start producing power. Uh, after the 300 second countdown, you'll hear clicks within the inverter. That's totally normal. That okay, means, that's yeah, it's, that's a good sign. Uh, any questions up here? Yeah, yeah, so we can walk a lap around this array. Yeah, so. Yeah, we got water right here. I'm hoping I won't have to clean them too much because they aren't tilted. Away. Yeah, uh, you, you know, we typically tell our customers every two years you're going to wash your system. That is pretty generous because we do get a lot of rain here in Oregon. Uh, there's just been a lot of, you know, vehicles moving in this area, which has just stirred up a lot of dust. So these definitely could use a cleaning prior to, uh, you know, being energized for the final time. Um, as far as, oh, you can see the module level electronics right here, located on this rail, just on the left side there. There's an optimizer. The optimizer has a couple different functions. Uh, its uh, primary function is because of NEC 2019 uh, solar systems, rooftop solar systems now have to have rapid shutdown on the module level. Uh, this optimizer allows us to shut down uh, on the module level so there won't be any DC electricity passing through this conduit here when uh, the rapid shutdown system is initiated. Uh, the other primary function is to increase the efficiency of the system. A uh, traditional solar system, if you had shade on one panel, you would be knocking out the solar uh, production for all the other panels. In this case, if you have shade on one panel, all the other panels, because they're going through the individual module level electronics, can continue to operate. Uh, ta -ta -ta. These mid clamps, located right here. We didn't use UFOs, huh? We did not, no. So this is a Sunmoto system. Uh, they're based out of Vancouver, Washington. Um, these mid clamps are the grounding mechanism, so if these systems were ever hit by lightning or anything, it would dissipate the electricity across the array and then into the foundation where these are uh, welded in. And there's also a grounding uh, rod going across the top of each individual array. We refer to these arrays over here as the West Expansion. We refer to this big one, these two big ones, or excuse me, three big ones right here as the doghouse because it looks like a little doghouse. Use extra rail? Just beefed it up? What, uh, ex what do you mean? What? Why didn't we cut rail? Because they're center one for the, usually it's just two. Oh, because there's 72 uh, cell panels. Wind load? Uh, yeah, they yeah. need three rails going across as opposed to a 60 good? cell panel. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Step on it. This is where you guys. We shouldn't have to step on these. They, we no, you. Have to really clean you won't step on these ones ever. Uh, you can clean them, you know, blast them with a hose, uh, long squeegee, and do just fine. There should never be any need for any tightening or. No, no. I mean, everything uh, is torqued to a certain spec. Uh, usually in, after one year we'll come out here and it's kind of our annual checklist, come out here and we'll come out here with the torque wrench and see how tight everything is, make sure nothing's moved. Um, but after that, you know, we're pretty confident if it hasn't moved in that first year, it won't move anytime soon. So if the optimizer goes out, the first year you guys will come up and do the maintenance on it, but like after that it'll be... Uh, I'm not 100% sure okay. as far as after one year if an optimizer goes out. The optimizers, uh, there is two optimizers that are out right now and how we track that is through the SolarEdge monitoring platform. You'll be able to see uh, where every 
optimizer is located, and that way when one goes out, we know exactly where it is. We can go right to it, pull it, replace it. Is there a serial number on the optimizer? There's a serial number on every optimizer, and then that's how we map it uh, on the back end. What would be the reason one optimizer goes out? It's electronic. Yeah, I mean, there's... Uh, 500 optimizers out here or something like that and two of them were bad upon arrival. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. you don't know, do you like hook them up before they Are they prone to break? Huh? No, I, I would say that's, that's about the ratio. It's about two to 500, you know, dead on arrival. Um, you know, maintenance over the years to come, we really just don't replace that many optimizers. Uh, just because it's not operating to its full uh, capability doesn't mean it's not you know operating at all so you'll see over time that these optimizers are you know starting to lose their oomph um, and that's very transparent you can see that on the online monitoring platform and you'll know when you know it's time to replace an optimizer so when that happens it doesn't knock down the other MPPT or will it it won't knock down any other just, uh, the, just the strings that are on that same MPPT or not it won't it won't even affect the string okay. yeah yeah, just the two panels that are connected to the one optimizer because we have that two to one oh, ratio. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a module attempt sensor. Like, it's usually like, what is it? I don't know if we're 72 cell, 40, 39. Uh, the voltage coming out of the optimizer? It's oh, like the, 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 the panel. The panel. Oh, off the top of my head, I can't tell you. Yeah. It, so the optimizer does knock it down to one, but not while it's on, just when it's off. Yeah. So it's only one volt when it's off. Yeah. If it's on, it's, it's, it's probably voltage. the voltage of what, two what, panels. What do you mean when it's off? Well, so these are, because these are optimized, when you turn the AC off, it will actually, the only wires that will be the same voltage as the panel are the wires that go from the panel to the optimizer but, and then from the optimizer out you can actually turn those off it would be one volt mm -hmm. yeah. okay. per optimizer so it makes it a little bit safer yeah they're 350 watt panels from solar world if that means any sense <laughs> are they are is everything the solar world 350s or is there other the the Bike canopy is made of the Lumos bi bay facials. Everything else is, is 350 Solar Worlds. Okay. Yep, the Lumos are 360s. Okay. Um, so our 300 second countdown is probably over, right?